Good day, Munir Ajam from Sukad Corp. And uh, today, topic is our third webinar, part of the Sukad Project Management Servant Leader Initiative. And the focus on the third webinar is that on project success, with a special emphasis on the Sukad way, the four dimension of project success. We start with a couple of general slides. The first one is about Sukkot purpose. Uh, and our purpose is to help organization drastically increase shareholder value. And the way we do this through our services, solution, training, and uh, definitely uh, that is the core objective of the Rook platform that we are currently developing. Uh, a few weeks ago, we launched uh, the Project Management Serv Servant Leader Initiative, uh, and that the uh, initiative consists of three major areas. Uh, one of them is group discussion, and that is basically include uh, these type of webinars. And then also we have uh, coaching and mentoring sessions that are available for any individual that would like to have uh, scheduled time with me for general mentoring or coaching, but anything related to project management. Uh, we are open to do that. We are also open for advisory session, and that would be these are geared toward uh, senior manager or executive in organizations. The main difference between these two here is that in coaching, uh, the focus is on the individual. So you as an individual, if you'd like to have an opportunity to discuss career move, career path, whatever the case might be related to project management, that will be for you. However, if you are a manager or, or an executive and you're interested in discussing project management for your organization, so it's an organizational focus, then you can book up time under the advisory and support session topic. Also, a few days ago, actually a couple of days ago, we launched the startup support. So basically, if you are a founder or a co-founder or part of a founding team of a startup uh, and you are still in the very early stages or maybe you haven't even started yet and you'd like advice from a project management perspective, we are available. For these individual uh, session, whether it's a startup or the advisory or the coaching, the way you do it is you can go uh, on Calendly and find Munir Ajam and schedule meeting with me you can pick up from it will automatically link to my calendar and you can schedule time that is convenient for you uh, among the, the the slots that i have allocated uh, all of these are free services and uh, you are welcome to take advantage of them and if you find out after one session you need more uh, we are open for more sessions obviously limited otherwise it cannot be extended service, but at least, you know, one or two or three session are possible free of charge. Uh, today's topic, is, we will talk about project success, as we mentioned, and we will highlight four major uh, topic in today's discussion. First, we will talk, uh, we will have a short poll uh, and then uh, we will have, uh, we will discuss the Sukad, why the Sukad way and why the four dimension, then we briefly touch on the four dimension and we end up with how are we implementing the four dimension as part of the digital solution, which is a Rook platform. So four main topic. Uh, a short poll, uh, three questions. And uh, since this is not a live webinar, uh, we will ask you to pause, think about them and answer. Uh, do you assess project success in your organization? Now, we've asked this on LinkedIn and over the last few day or so, we got about 25 responses. I will share them next. But for now, um, think about this. Do you assess project success on, in your organization? Was it formally or informally or whatever the case might be? And how do you assess project success? Again, something to think about. Uh, and finally, do you assess the objective success? which is usually cannot be measured until long after the project completion. Take a minute to think about them. Okay, we'll move on. Uh, we only posted one of these questions on LinkedIn. 
and uh, it's only been in one day we got 25 votes as you can see here and uh, the responses were about 52 percent as you can see that said yes they always uh, assess success on their project now we did not follow uh, as a follow-up question maybe we'll do so in the next few days uh, but for now uh, basically on the first question 52 percent about half said yes and 44 percent said sometime but informal all right, so I would probably take this more on uh, on as a no. So, and finally, the last one was more of a joke. What is project success? I guess uh, maybe out of the 25 people, one person wanted to follow was us and our uh, probably bad sense of humor. Anyway, so basically what we can tell from this quick poll is that uh, at least half uh, do not properly or assess project success. Now, why is that? Uh, I, I don't know why, because we did not have an opportunity to uh, expand in the discussion uh, or in a poll or even do a live interview. However, what we can say is uh, there are confusion. When it comes to project success, there are confusion, and we'll share some of them here. Uh, first, there is too much confusion, especially when talking about project success without the proper context. What do we mean by this? Often enough, we find people posting online said, ah, project success, yes, or project failure, or 70% of projects succeed or fail, whatever the case might be. But in this case, what are they talking about? What does the definition or what are we, what do we mean by project success? So it is, if no context is, uh, is offered, most of these posts are really meaningless or at least do not provide a good uh, value uh, because we don't understand um, what's behind the scene. L let me give you an example of this. When we talk about success, are we talking about success from the perspective of the owner, the project owner, uh, the end user, uh, or as a service provider, a contractor, right? So obviously, uh, success from which perspective, it make a difference. If the project owner, now even more confusion, so let's say we are talking about success from the perspective of the project owner. In that case, are we talking about the project owner from, let's say the project owner is uh, a medical uh, company that run clinic and hospital, okay? And that's project owner. So I'm in Texas, so maybe Texas Methodist or Memorial or one of these organization. Uh, of course, it could be hotels, Hilton, um, Marriott, or it could be oil and gas, right? So from the project owner perspective, the end user, are we talking about success from the business side, from the operation side, or from project management? Again, we need, even within that, we need to clarify, right? Um, the third point here, maybe we are concerned about the project manager success. And sometimes we've seen that is when people talk about project management success, they uh, indirectly or directly, consciously or subconsciously link it to a project manager. This is not about the project manager, it's about the project. Finally, do we consider success uh, of the project, the product, the output, the outcome, and what are the differences between these terms? Uh, we'll elaborate on these a little bit later. Now, what's the current state? Um, and when it comes to success, so even uh, let's take it gener generically right now without zooming in on any of the dimension or any of the uh, output or outcome. Uh, in general, you know, and you can ask your yourself this question, how are we doing as a project management community in terms of delivering success? Um, and the answer is we don't know uh, because there's too much confusion, as we mentioned already. There is no criteria often given. Uh, so uh, we don't have any real research. I mean, I know PMI and Oxford and IPA and CII and a lot of other organizations have done studies on success, but most of them often they publish information without any real data or they're, they're uh, we're not sure if they're talking about project management success or they're talking about business success uh, i mean not in all cases in some cases we know very well but often enough what we see published if it doesn't give the context 
then we don't know. Um, so, I mean, we know certain things, but uh, it's not enough to be able to scientifically summarize it here today. Uh, although I'll touch on some of that later. Um, so what we know so far, and again, this is based on loose report without any real defined uh, often criteria, is that infrastructure projects, these are usually uh, run, these are the type of project run by government. Uh, they usually could be the worst for too many reasons. Some uh, maybe political, political project management, lack of project management, uh, over dependence and contractor uh, delays there are too many reasons on this and I've done some of the research for, uh, uh, on this topic when I was doing my mega project book uh, but basically what we've seen in some report claim as little as one in 1000 project only is successful now I think sometimes this might fall into the category of sensational reporting which means reporting to scare uh, and again, uh, we don't know, uh, we don't believe this number is true uh, because we don't know what the criteria. And uh, in one situation, when I saw a presentation on topic like this, I actually asked the author, said, you know, what's your criteria? And really got nothing. Uh, and uh, for example, I even asked something specific, like if the project is end up with 101% complete, so 1% over the established budget, is that a failure? no answer so we don't know uh when something like you know it could be true but i think uh, from what we've seen this definitely doesn't make sense uh however we do agree in, based on numerous research and quantifiable research that infra infrastructure project uh, do not do too well in comparison to uh, private sector project and technology, uh, I know some of my friends will object to using something like the Standish Group uh, Chaos Report. However, uh, despite some of the uncertainty about that report, uh, what we hear is about one third of project as success. But again, uh, I think the reason the, that report is criticized is we don't have a clear criteria. So we're not sure are they talking, uh, in this case, are they talking about project management success or business success and how they define success, right? Uh, so read these numbers uh, with a grain of salt, as they say, or just as rough uh, indicator, not a true, a true indicator. Uh, in capital project, now this is more uh, substantial because uh, in capital project IPA, the independent project analysis does benchmarking. So they actually collect a lot of data and they publish a success criteria. And based on that is that the large percentage of the project within the IPA da database, okay, which could be better or worse than the community at large. I would think it's probably be better because anyone higher IPA to do benchmarking for them, these guys must be serious about performance. Uh, so that I would assume, again, and the danger in assuming uh, is that the percentage that are provided by IPA is probably better than the community at large. Uh, even with that, what they're coming up with, uh, and this is based on a book by Paul Barshop, uh, it's called Capital Project, is that 60% of the project are successful in the sense, uh, however, they lose some of their NPV, uh, which mean, what that mean is that when a company launch a project and they expect, let's say a million dollar profit, uh, by the time the project is complete, uh, they still make profit, but their profit is probably reduced by up to 45%. So it's about almost half of what they expected in terms of profit is lost due to many factors uh, that deserve a topic on its own. But for now, uh, we all what we do is share this number is 60% of capital project uh, are successful. And by capital project, typically we mean a project with engineering, construction facilities, uh, industrial buildings and things of that nature. An industrial mega project, uh, there's a book also by IPA founder, uh, Mr. Ed Mero, uh, who is an expert on uh, mega project and benchmarking. 
and his study was based on a few hundred, uh, I think 318 projects, mega project, which mean uh, a billion dollar or above. I believe uh, the average value of a project in this study was $3.2 billion. And uh, what he concluded is 35% uh, are successful project per their criteria, which is stringent criteria. Um, so one out of three. Now, when we talk criteria evaluation, uh, when we think about uh, project success, uh, so there are other methods to consider. And for example, one of them, do organizations set a criteria or not? And as you can see from the poll I just shared earlier, about half they said they do it informally. Informally, that means there is no formal process, no formal criteria setting and things of that nature. So how can we assess success without the criteria? I will come back to this at the end of the presentation. And let's give a, uh, and this is going back to the context we're talking about. For example, is overrun or over budget a failure? Or is there a degree of tolerance? Remember what I ask. If the project, let's say 1% over budget, is that considered overrun? Or let's say it's overrun, is it considered a failure? Or do we tolerate plus or minus 5%? How about if a project is 80% below budget? Is that a success? Or there is a failure somewhere? Same thing about schedule delay. Is there a tolerance, which means uh, plus or minus 5% of the schedule completion date, or uh, if the project is uh, 90 weeks, it's plus or minus three weeks is considered acceptable, or a day behind schedule is considered failure? And these are important criteria to define, and usually these are uh, dependent on the organization culture and function. What happened in some situations such as what we hear about Agile is that who cares about schedule or budget, right? What's important is the scope, get the work done. Or maybe the ver vice versa, we set a time box and then within that time box, whatever we accomplish, we accomplish. Obviously, for the agile world, that might work and that might be perfectly acceptable, uh, but that raises a challenge. How do we assess success in those situations? How formal or informal is the process if it exists in your organization? And finally, what happened after project closure? Many organizations close the project. So let's say uh, the project is to build a new clinic. Uh, and we built it and we finished the facility. We handed over the facility to the client. We close the project and we move on. Are we done? Can we assess success at that point in time? I will be highlighting this later. But these are some of the questions we want you to consider as we talk about project success. Take a breather for a second. Um, you notice in the slide, the change the color in the background, and that's the way we uh, are doing this slide to indicate change of topic. So now we are on topic number two, which is why uh, this the four dimension of project success. But before we answer that is we need to talk about why the Sukad way. And as you probably, if you heard uh, some of the earlier presentation or uh, you've been watching or following SUCAD for a while, you know the term SUCAD way represent the SUCAD way project management framework, which consists of uh, this component. Um, at the organizational level, we have the seven element of project management maturity. Uh, and then we have part of the four dimension that we'll talk about and I will highlight later. Then in terms of managing the project, we have the methodology, which was uh, webinar number one topic. And uh, we have element of project success as well. Next week topic will focus on this and the week after will focus on this. So I will leave those for later and uh, no need to, uh, to discuss them today. Uh, but why is the Sukad way? Go back to 
ask me the question uh, and why the four dimension for this we have a video and uh, I will just play maybe a minute or two but then you can find this video on the Sukad YouTube channels and then uh, you will be able to, uh, to to view the whole video because it's 10 minutes and I don't want I don't want to use the time here uh, to present 10 minutes of videos so uh, you can find this uh, video this is part of the Sukad way series uh, and so far we have published two, two videos on that series and so you can actually uh, go there but uh, to answer the question here uh, the primary focus of why is the Sukad way is simply to cover gaps that are left by the Pumba guide and other standards. I, I'm hitting on the Pumba guide here not to critique the Pumba guide because I, I do like the guide despite some of it is uh, inconsistency and some of uh, gaps. It's still a good guide uh, but because it's the most popular uh, global standard uh, guideline uh, uh, or proper the most popular guide that is used globally because it's used for the PMP certification which is highly popular. Obviously, uh, there are other guides in the project management community from IPMA, GPM, uh, and many of the other project management organizations around the world. Uh, however, again, the Pumba guide is, has been the most popular because of the PMP certification. And uh, uh, as we meet and talk and, uh, and work with many people who have been studying uh, for one PMI certification or another, obviously, they refer to the guide. So years ago, we discovered there are a lot of gaps in there. Now, the gaps, not necessarily error. Some of the gaps from the guide were by, uh, by design. Like for example, the guide does not address building an organization system. It mentions the need to build an organization system. The guide does not include uh, a methodology. It mentions the need to develop a methodology. So these are not error and not criticism of the guide. But that is part of the mandate of the guide is to provide the processes uh, to help us manage a phase or a stage of a project. It's not a complete framework for everything you want to hear about in project management. And I don't know if, if some, such a thing exists anywhere in the world. Um, uh, so many people who study the guide, they, they found out there's a, they, they used to think of the guide as a PM methodology. And when they discover it is not, they struggle. They think it is an organization system, and when they find out it's not, they struggle in implementing. So as a result of that, we start to develop the SUCAD way, which included an organizational project management approach and include a project management methodology and other things as well. Uh, I hope... Ah, the video is finally playing for a second. Uh, Thank you. 
With this, we stop. Um, again, you can watch the full video and the videos that came after it on the Sukkad way on the Sukkad YouTube channel. So let's zoom in now on why the fourth dimension. And uh, and we think part one of this presentation answered this, which is, you know, the confusion, the gap, the lack of criteria, uh, no assessment post closure of project, no links to anticipated benefit. And you know, we did not talk about that before, but we'll touch on it a little bit later. So basically what we found out, uh, bottom line is that we found out that project success uh, is almost missing. And, you know, uh, remember, I shared with you this uh, uh, poll earlier today, uh, earlier when it shows about half assessed success. That is in January or February 2021. When we were doing this back in 2007, 8, 9 and 10, in those days, I would really question whether 10% of the companies were actually measuring success. And in those days, and even later, when we used to ask a question, most people said, ah, you know, yeah, they assess success. They ask the customer, and usually this comes from a service provider perspective, we ask the customer for, if they're satisfied. And to them, that's uh, the end of it. Um, so we that part of the reason we felt like, look, we need to do something more. Uh, so, as you can see here, uh, we have the four dimension, and uh, we will explain each one of them in the next few slides. The first one, D1, is uh, what we call product uh, delivery or technical success, uh, or another word, the output. So, we assess the success of the output. And I think most of what the PMI Pomba guide was focusing on in the past is about delivering an output. Uh, so here we go. If we think about the SUCAD project lifecycle, focusing on the stages, you will notice here that we have the nine stages, uh, which is starting with the concept stage, Uh, the feasibility stage, requirement stage, strategy stage, then we talk about definition. And when we do the definition, is that what we call, we produce the project detail plan that you see here. And the project detail plan is uh, depend on which industry you come from, the name might be different. It could be called uh, the front end engineering design or preliminary engineering uh, or detail plan. Again, depend on the industry, the name could be different, but this basically is more of like a detailed plan or design for what to implement and implementation come next. Uh, so, in other words, this document, at least in the camp approach, include for us two major things that are of concern to assess the output. One is the scope of work. So what, what do we need to do? What is the output going to be? Okay, so in other words, when we implement this work, what are we going to produce? That's the output. Uh, it could be a clinic, it could be a software, it could be a study, um, it could be a chemical plant. So what the output? So and the detail plan will include the detail plan for that output. And the second thing that usually the detail plan would include uh, that of importance to us is that the quality standard that we need to follow, the specs, the specifications, right? So usually at the end of implementation, if we look at the screen here, and after we do, uh, we hand over, usually we hand over at gate six, after we hand over and uh, basically final acceptance, which is at gate eight, usually when we do that, that indicates that we have accepted the output okay uh, obviously or the project is terminated if we cannot accept the output we're going to continue working until we can accept the output so acceptance is completion uh, we've completed the work but that doesn't mean success now we need to assess success in that case so at that point at that point 
we can do the first dimension of success, which is to assess technical, and we call it technical success, which means did we deliver the product per the specification and the characteristic, the scope that we wanted? Yes or no? And of course, in this case, it could be a degree of tolerance, you know, a percent of defect that will be considered acceptable, uh, consider of waivers that will be considered acceptable, right? So the organization, I'm not getting into a criteria here. I'm just defining at what point we can assess that success and what the criteria. And uh, that is something I will touch on later, but it's usually we are not talking about it here because it's all depending on the function of and the type of the project. Uh, right, so in, in software project could be different than facility project, different than marketing project. But at the, what the point that we need to emphasize again, repeating a little bit, we define the guideline, the criteria should be defined in the PDP, and then we measure acceptance uh, at gate eight. And notice that is before closing. Then we go on to dimension two. And that is where we assess the project management success. And in this case, the baseline or the reference point is a project management plan that we have here. And notice that is before the definition stage, because typically when we work on the strategy stage, that is when we develop the project management plan. Now we might update that plan during the definition in terms of cost and schedule performance, because those are the final data we have. So but basically the project management plan may be updated just before gate five, which means before we go into implementation, right? That determined the project management criteria and parameters such as cost and schedule performance and maybe anything else that we wanna include with it. And of course, we can assess that at project closure just at gate nine before we actually close the project, uh, which means notice this point is later than D1, right? So it, uh, it cover a wider period. If we move on to the third dimension, and uh, unfortunately, I don't know how to move my video from here. Uh, you will see that there is uh, a question mark on this image. Maybe you'll see it later. And if we move further back in the life cycle, notice we are moving this way, is that we have the PAD, the project authorization, or people who knows maybe the term charter. That is the situation where we have the, uh, where we define the project delivery for the project, such as the, the overall vision that the sponsor will be developing. Uh, and of course, usually that is not, we cannot measure at closure, we measure at some point in the future. And that, unfortunately, uh, I need to learn how to move this video, but forgive me for now. Uh, and usually what we're saying is that when we, when we can measure this, is that sometime in the future, and we don't know when exactly, because it depends on the nature of the project. Uh, let, let me, to be concrete, give you an example. If we are launching, if we are building a gymnasium, uh, and that's our project, Obviously, completing the product, building the gymnasium, having the facility ready to open, we can assess the technical success, which is dimension one, and we can assess project management success. However, we cannot assess the, uh, the charter. You, I mean, why are we doing this? For example, is why are we doing this gym? Well, we want customer. Okay. The ultimate goal is D4, which we'll talk about next. But for now, let's say in order to assess that whether this project building the gym has been successful is we want to assess that uh, probably within the first six months it's fully operational at 70 percent capacity right that could be an indicator that could be something we can measure uh, and then if we achieve that within six months we have 70 percent capacity or uh, we have uh, 200 membership then we will consider this project delivery as a success uh, and depend on the nature of the project, we can come up with something similar for other project types. 
the ultimate objective for us or the ultimate dimension for us in the project success is the objective success which is about the outcome and uh, notice in this case we the charter was here and we are not we are now moving further back to the document that we call the project brief which is the product of the of the concept stage and in the feasibility uh, we use it so at that point on time that is that project brief define the just the business case uh, define and the feasibility define the justification so we need to understand the business case and the business case typically could include for example for the gym is that we want to be profitable by year uh, by the end of the third year something like this right so that means and we want to have 20 percent return on investment again whatever you want the criteria if it is a non-profit project the criteria could be uh, reaching out uh, providing water to a thousand uh, villager uh, so whatever the criteria is you want to establish that uh, and that usually related to the business case or the objective the, the objective of the project again was a profit for non-profit government or non-government and of course in that case we cannot measure it at closure and that is measured someday in the future as i mentioned for example you know profitable by the end of the third year for a gymnasium then obviously i cannot measure that until three years later uh, or uh, return on investment within a five-year time span of 20 percent i cannot measure that until five years after the completion of the project so objective success to me is the most critical it's focusing on the outcome it focus on the outcome which mean not the output the output is, is remember in the genetic in the case of gymnasium the gymnasium is the output the outcome is the benefit and here we are linking this dimension to benefit realization the benefit what we expected right so if we expected to have a return 20 percent return on investment by the end of the fifth fifth year then we should be able to measure that so did we achieve that more or less and when we know um, uh, whether that project has been have achieved its objective have achieved the anticipated benefit and in that case we can say success or not so again the measure is sometime in the future and uh, the arrow you cannot see behind my picture is sometime in the future it could be a year it could be five it could be ten it could be twenty depend on the nature of the project so to us this is uh, and this is something that used to be completely missing from the Pumba guide and many uh, guide on project management because money guide unfortunately they used to take the view of project management as focusing on only delivering the output okay our job as project manager to deliver the output what happened with it after that is none of our business well uh, if we really need to think of project management from a strategic perspective and link project management to asset management then we need to focus on the business objective or, or the strategic objective and then uh, have the, uh, the, uh, the assessment of success linked to that so the focus again is on the outcome um, uh, basically in some non-profit project or community project or government project like you know some of the infrastructure project you might hear something about and I know one of the people who follow us online sometimes they keep asking the question is that the impact uh, of the project that impact to communities or social impact obviously uh, that is could be part of the outcome remember when you establish your objective you need to define what do you want to measure and again the measure could be in in case of private industries return on investment or profit or revenue uh, in terms of non-profit and government it could be uh, uh, it could include also profit or revenue or services provided or social impact or community impact or uh, employing 10,000 people whatever the case might be uh that could be uh, you you put that as part of the criteria that you want to measure if you don't put it as part of the criteria then how do we measure success uh, notice changing color again uh, I'll, I'll just uh, I'll give you those hint and so you get used to the way we're doing things is that the final topic today is a link to a Rook platform and you notice here I split it between D1, D2, and D3, D4. Let's 
the key uh, criteria for us here is or critical point for us in term of uh, the uh, project life cycle is closing the project right the point of closure which is gate 9 in this aspect here that is when we close the project and obviously before closing the project we can have d1 and d2 these are two measures we can assess them and remember we said we assess d1 here and we assess d2 there so they both could be assessed before closing the project which typically mean the project manager is still on board the project manager is preparing with the team preparing the closeout report and so when we close the project we should have conclusion uh, we should have concluded the evaluation of these two dimension and include that in the closeout report so when it comes to Uruk uh, Uruk have four major elements uh, one of them administrative that doesn't concern us much in in this in the context of this presentation uh, but the main one that it concern us we have two managing a project element and managing the portfolio element so basically uh, in the in Uruk in the Uruk platform uh, in the managing a project element which is based on camp these two dimension will be included so part of the dashboard and metrics that we include we would include uh, assessment for project success for these first two dimension that would be within the managing a project element that means within the project life cycle then we close the project now when we close the project we should do many things as you're probably uh, familiar with uh, obviously celebrate uh, hopefully winning successful uh, we have to archive the project data and typically we produce a close out report now what we are seeing here is part of the close out report there should be something about project success and when when can or should we conduct the evaluation for d3 and d4 which we haven't done yet now based on the nature of the project we know for example d3 could be done maybe six months or a year later and d4 could be done maybe five years later that is something we need to do put here and in a way what we are doing here we are handing over this document the close out report with this kind of information to the project management unit in the company and i'm using the term unit here it could be pmo or it could be pm department uh, which mean those d3 the project the project life cycle is ending at this point However, we asked the question in Uruk sometime is when is the end of the project? Okay, this point is ending, is closing the project life cycle work. So basically, we just finish all the work that we can do within the life cycle and we can close the project paperwork. However, technically, in the background, as far as the organization is concerned, the project is still live but now what remaining on it is a final d3 and d4 assessment are owned by a project management unit so it's basically viewed from an organizational perspective which what we can see here so after closing the project we have d3 and d4 okay and now you can see this arrow here the second arrow is still hidden behind my image uh, and it's sometime in the future that is usually assessed and of course by that time the project manager is long gone or maybe reassigned or maybe left the company uh, but someone within the project management unit should have that as, as a pending task that's sitting there until we are ready whenever that time period is to do that assessment and the same thing for D4 these are to me uh, they are very critical points that we need to assess them we need to have them uh, in the system uh, for the organization otherwise uh, you know organization do project maybe we celebrate but are we really assessing 
uh, did those projects achieve their, their mission? Did this project achieve their objective? Uh, did those projects achieve their net present value? Um, or, you know, basically, you know, uh, and I, I put this in, in my mega project book is that often enough what we see a lot of research on, on project success and failure, uh, what we hear is about when organization launch project, they establish some kind, assuming they're for-profit project, they probably establish your return on investment, the net present value and all of those factors. Right, they established them, uh, and then uh, said, "Okay, we expect on this project to have ten million dollar net present value." Great, okay, that is an estimate of future expectation, which means future revenue and future expenses. By the time the project is done, we don't have revenue yet. Usually, it's only expenses, so the revenue would come later. Uh, I know organizations are capturing that, but are they capturing them? in comparison to the actually also what our kind of operating cost, the life cost of that project is happening. And then to, in order to assess the value in terms of financial finances or other, other otherwise, uh, some organization might be doing that, or maybe, you know, uh, I'm sure if they're running, making a profit, they said, you know, they're happy and um, they're fine, but uh, are they officially measuring that? Uh, that's a question uh, if they do it's probably a lot of confidential information that they're not sharing uh, and i'll give example i mean for example any mega project even on the mega scale you know uh, for example uh, where i came from in dubai there was the dubai metro where everybody praised dubai metro as a success well is it i, I really don't know uh, yes, success in terms of nice metro facilities is built, uh, is great. Uh, however, did it achieve uh, the return on investment? Did it achieve the profit? Did it achieve everything else that was supposed to be expected? Uh, same thing with the English Channel. Uh, what we see here is that it didn't achieve. So it wasn't a success from a business perspective. Uh, or any Olympics. I know um, at Oxford University, there are a lot of research done on Olympics and how di disastrous they are in terms of project management wise. Uh, uh, there are many other projects out there, small or large, uh, and the question is that uh, if we don't learn from them, uh, and in order to assess that, I mean, we can look at, it's easier maybe to look at project management success. So if we are in project management and we are primarily concerned with project management, then that's fine. We can assess project management success. However, if, if project owner a project management is just a mechanism. It's just a tool we use to build project to increase value to our shareholders, right? So ultimately we need to link project management to facilities management, to asset management, to product management. And then we need to look at success. Okay, not only within that life cycle or only from a project management perspective or only from a technical perspective, we need to look at success from a business objective success. And that's what's important uh, to, to leave that information that to be assessed in the future and again in this section here we're focusing on Arook that is what our aim is that Arook as it become as it's uh, released as a market and as it grow all that information will be available and then it will help organization assess and use Arook to maximize shareholder value so this part of uh, of the dimension, the D3 and D4 will be part of the managing the portfolio element. They will not be part of the project anymore because technically the project life cycle has been or should have been closed. I mean, maybe some organization could keep them open, but uh, that will be more of an administrative and financial control issue. In closing, uh, notice we did not define criteria. Uh, and the reason for that is that highly dependent on the organization culture and type of project and is different for each dimension. Obviously, in project management success, a common criteria could be plus or, 10, plus or minus 10% of budget or plus or minus 10% of duration. That's fine. Or 5% or 20%, whatever you want to define them. Right. Uh, but product uh, depend on the nature of the product. For example, software, you know, uh, it could be... Uh, 
uh, access time or bugs or whatever the case might be. Uh, I, I'm sure you get the point. So we could not, what we are saying here, all what we could say, all what we could offer is that for a given type of project, a criteria has to be established at a given point in time. Because if we don't establish the criteria, if we don't define the criteria, yeah, then evaluating success becomes an opinion or a debate. Maybe you like debate, uh, and I do like debate. However, at the end of the day, at organization, we need some science behind those debates. With this, uh, I, I come to closure. Uh, I thank you. You can follow us uh, on many of the social media platform, uh, as you can see here. Uh, obviously, as you know, we have a blog site and we have uh, a YouTube channel where this video would be posted. And uh, with this, thank you. However, before I close, I just want to highlight this. Some of you who have been following us, uh, they know uh, we are building the Rook platform and as a cloud-based solution. Uh, based on the SUCAD way and other global practices. So it's not, the SUCAD way was a trigger for Uruk. And uh, this week we'll be publishing uh, a video to show how is Uruk, some of it we touch on in this presentation, how Uruk is linked to the SUCAD way. Uh, but uh, primarily we have started to raise fund. Uh, this last week and this week is private. So basically whoever has this link can already can invest and we have already reached about 20 percent of our lower threshold uh, or initial target uh, so it's been going well uh, but we need more uh, and uh, starting on the 9th of february which could be passed depend on when you watch this video uh, the we funder campaign will go live to everybody to the whole to, to the full public uh, and uh, this is, is, is not a reward based, it's an equity based crowdfunding campaign, which means anyone who invests anywhere from $100 to $100,000 will be getting equity in Sukad Corp. Now I can say thank you, have a great day, and wish you success today, tomorrow, and always.